Hey guys, Dan with Pain For You. Today's topic is going to be, why do I feel better when I'm active? And when I say active, I mean it could be mentally, could mean socially, could mean physically. So that's what the topic's gonna be. Before I start, I wanna just take a pause to help us all get into a really good state here. So I'm gonna pan around, we're gonna do a little bit of breathing. I think breathing is a key to really bring our nervous system down and get into a great state to listen and notice and be in a place to accept some of the things I'm trying to share with you. Because it is very common for people to listen, but not hear, right? So I'll touch on that in the next video, but for right now, Let's take a couple of breaths at whatever pace feels good for you. I'm not going to count. I'm not going to do anything, but let's just look around and take a few breaths. Feel your thinking calm down. Notice your breath. Feel your body relax. Nice deep breaths. And what we're doing here is we are really just getting into a place of being very calm, very relaxed, and very receptive to the information which I'm going to share for you. So, now hopefully start doing this on a regular basis. I think it's really important for us to bring the stress level down as we try to engage in the outside world, engage in some new information, even just connect with ourselves. Soothing I think is real important. And again, I will do a full video on that next. So, today's topic. Many people feel better when they are engaged either mentally, socially, physically, going out with friends, laughing, having a good time, don't notice the pain so much. Hey, the pain's not there. Wondering what's going on with that. Other people, when they are engaged in doing some work or music or art that they really love, they don't feel the pain as much. Or when they are engaged physically. A lady just told me that she can go out and play table tennis and get really engaged and really active. And when she's doing that, her pelvic pain she says she can expect that it's going to leave her alone for a while. But afterwards, the pain comes back. And that's very common with a lot of folks. You go out socially, you get engaged mentally with whatever you're doing that's really important to you. And, and the pain can leave you alone or your symptoms can lessen. But then when you stop doing that thing that has you so engaged, the pain or the symptoms come back. Here's why I believe that is the case. And it goes back to the core that TMS is here to protect us from our emotional and stress-induced um, life, really. Um, man, do I like these birds. Love it, spring is here. It's still cold, but spring is here. So look, back to the purpose of TMS. The purpose of TMS was to distract us from these overwhelming, scary, even perceived as dangerous emotions that don't fit with their self-esteem then once pain takes hold the pain becomes the distraction the pain becomes the obsession the pain starts to go up and down depending upon feelings of danger or not or conditioned responses there's there's a number of things that happen but the purpose of it is to keep us safe from this emotional world so why why does our pain often leave us alone when we are engaged in the outside world, whether through physical activity, exercise, movement, taking a walk, whether it be through getting mentally engaged in something, learning something, studying something, playing music, art, whatever it may be, really doing something that has meaning and purpose to us, or through socially engaged. In my opinion, it's because if the brain's goal is to keep us distracted from these overwhelming, scary, dangerous emotions and all of this stress, 
when we are engaged physically, mentally, socially, even spiritually, the brain says, ah, they're safe right now. I don't need the pain. They don't need the pain to keep them distracted because right now they're not in their own head. They're not paying attention to or freaking out about their stress and their perceived limitations and judgments and self-hatred and they're safe because they're engaged in the outside world and as a result the brain will let the pain diminish here's the challenge when we get done doing this thing that has us very well connected with a purpose a mission just an activity or friends or family or something we get back into our head, we climb back in where all of that, I'll say those ugly emotions are and our fears and our judgments and our thinking, sometimes it's stinking thinking. And when we get back to that world of being in our head, the brain says, oh shit, they're back there. They're not safe again. I need to bring that pain back to keep them distracted from these this emotional and stress world that the brain has concluded is unsafe. And one story I will tell you is a lovely lady out in Las Vegas. She has crippling knee pain. She's had multiple surgeries, belief that there's permanent damage from botched surgeries. And she can barely get across the house sometimes, but yet she can jump on a, a bicycle, like one of those Tour de France type of road bicycles, you know, with the curved handlebars and she can ride for miles and miles and miles, 30, 50, 70 miles at a time, sometimes uphill for 26 miles in a row. And while she's riding, she's in the zone. One thing is she's breathing because she has to, to be able to keep her body moving, but she's in the zone. She's completely out of her head. She's into her body and she's in the zone and she's in a place where she loves. And her brain says, ah, she's safe and the brain lets go of the pain. There's no pain in her knees at all, right? But then she'll get done with the ride, put the bike in the car, drive home. By the time she gets home, her knees are screaming at her. Now look, I know some of the mechanical people here will say, well, she overtrains them, she overworks them. The muscle or the, the joints are sore because, you know, she overworked them. Well, what about mile 15 on a 26 mile uphill ride? Isn't she overworking him then? She has no pain. So I absolutely believe that the brain interprets her bike ride as a safe place because she's not in her head thinking about all the things that have brought about the pain in the first place. And so that's just an extreme example, but a really good one to show that when the brain believes you're safe and you're not in this world of emotions and fears and um, stresses and self judgments, the brain will let go, right? Which is why so much of what I talk about is getting the mindset of one, not caring about the pain, but then going and living your life. Get engaged in your life again. Do things that matter, that bring you purpose and meaning and joy and connection. Why? Because that is curative that will help the pain dissipate. And when you start to see that in action, your belief that it's all TMS and, and created in the mind skyrockets. It's beautiful. And so experiment with this. If you're not the type who's done any activity, whether it be mental, physical, spiritual, um, social, try it, get really engaged, put the pain out of your head, stop thinking about all the reasons why you're broken mentally and physically, and just get engaged in something. Do something that will bring you joy. If you don't know what that is because you've been in pain so long, find something, experiment, find a hobby, hang out with a friend, get on the phone, call somebody, and don't talk about your pain, but talk about life, what's going on. And oh, by the way, don't talk about this world pandemic bullshit either. That's only gonna scare you more. Talk about the good things, right? Right now, I can't tell you how much peace it brings me to come back out here in nature and just listen.
Listen to those birds. That is so peaceful. Guys, if you are spending your life indoors, get outside. Even if you can barely move, get outside. Have somebody pull up a lawn chair for you, a, a, an upright chair, and sit on your front porch if you have to. Get some sunlight, get some fresh air. It is so healing and soothing. And as you're out there, do a little bit of breathing, right? Really important. So, why do you feel better when you're active, both mentally, physically, socially, spiritually? It's because you get outside of this head, and unfortunately for all of us, myself included, it can be kind of a scary place in there sometimes, right? We can go dark fairly easily if we start to follow these thoughts into the darkness. So the more we can get back into living our lives and really, really just, yeah, get back to life, the faster you're going to find that these pains disappear. And so many people will say, I'll go start having fun when the pain's gone. I'm going to stay miserable until the pain's gone, but then I'm going to be really happy. It doesn't work that way, folks. you got to decide to be happy and get re-engaged in living your life. Now, even though you hurt, get the mindset that the pain really doesn't matter because it doesn't. And when you finally get through it, you're going to go, oh, that's what Dan was talking about. That's what all these people are talking about when they said they literally stopped giving a shit if they hurt or not and went back and got engaged and active with life, whether it be physical movements. And I get Physical movements can be scary. Dun, dun, dun. They can be because if we're afraid of the physical movements, the brain's going to go, danger, danger, here's some pain. Right? So go slow. Be gentle with yourself. Resume physical activity slowly. Look, there are some groups here on Facebook, the TMS groups, that will encourage you to dive back into it. And if it hurts like crazy, just keep working through it. Look, not everybody's capable of doing that. Not everybody wants to do that. I believe that type of force yourself through it can really freak us out because if we're, we're, if we're on the fence in any way, shape, or form about the cause of our symptoms and we do that, so many people will conclude, oh my God, I just did this physical stuff and I hurt myself. I re-injured myself. I knew it was physical. I knew this was a bad idea, right? Does that sound familiar? If that's you, then I am going to really encourage you, go gentle back into the physical movement but there's no reason you can't hang out with some friends and laugh and joke and enjoy yourself. Get out of your pain brain. Get out of your fearful thinking brain and start living life again. And you will find that as you get active, you'll notice there will be times when, hey, the pain wasn't so bad then. Connect the dots. Please connect the dots to this video because you will perfectly find that to be the case. Uh, one more example, my friend Susie, she's got leg weakness, right? And this is an odd symptom because it's not pain. And here I am talking about pain all the time. And she keeps going, but other symptoms too. It's not just pain, Dad. And so in her case, she's recently gotten involved in doing um, recorded interviews within her local community there in the UK. And she's really engaged and she feels like she's doing something positive, right? Because her local community is dealing with the, the fear of this uh, coronavirus thing. And so she has now come up with like this sense of purpose and meaning and people are saying, this is great, Susie, yes. And so as she gets engaged in this social and community work, she feels she's got a purpose. And guess what happens to her leg weakness? She begins to walk better right and it's really a fascinating example of how when we get actively engaged outside of our thinking and fearing head all of a sudden the body starts to go oh cool i can return to more normal function not perfect in her case yet but it's such a glaring example that when we are actively living life the brain will see less of a need to protect us and distract us and let our symptoms calm down. So, Susie, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, 
and I'd like to round this up with a little more of the outside, listen to the birds, take a few more breaths. Think about what you've just heard. Maybe watch it again. Share it if you feel somebody else can benefit by this. It's a gloomy day, but I'll tell you what, I'm feeling really optimistic. Optimistic because I know the world's gonna get through what it's going through. Really optimistic because I know you guys are out there learning, listening, connecting, and you're getting it because I get comments all the time of how people are feeling better. And so, despite the gloom in the air with the, it just got done raining last night, and the fog in the air, I'm really optimistic. I hope you are too. With that, love you guys and gals. We'll talk soon.